I'm at the NAB Cinema Summit with Goran from Barco and Barco this year actually did the um, cinema side of the presentation with their brand new or well, their laser um, six primary laser projector. Now there's other laser projectors on the market as you know and there's more coming but I wanted to really go over um, this projector because um, unlike some of the other projectors this is a, a single head projector um, while some others are doing dual head and now there's a big advantage to doing that and I want Goran to go, th go through um, why would you want to use a single head over a dual head uh, um, projector? Yeah. So uh, the very big benefit of using a single head projector is that uh, you don't have uh, the hassle and the alignment uh, cost of dual projection systems. Dual projection systems uh, tend to get misaligned on screen, they tend to, uh, <laughs> they tend to shift uh, uh, in, uh, in, in alignment on screen, so the pixels uh, diverge from each other and as a result you don't have a, a sharp picture on screen. A single projector system is always sharp, it's always accurate and you always get the pictures uh, uh, as they're intended to be uh, on screen. Um, the um, fact of doing a single projection laser uh, system uh, also means that we need to boost the brightness uh, to a very high level uh, on that projector and boosting the brightness uh, comes of course with uh, having the right cooling uh, for the system. So it's actually a whole package of a single projection, a high brightness uh, and a really well cooled system. Yeah, I agree with that and, and for the people who are watching for example, uh, to give you an example of why single head projectors are more important is that if you look in the world of 3D where we had a lot of light problems, you'll see there's very few very few indeed of dual um, 3D projection systems and the reason is because the studios were very worried about the quality of the presentations it's very easy just to simply knock one of those projectors out of the dual head and you know create a problem an artifact on the screen where the projectors no longer line up so well so it's a, it's a big issue um, maintenance and because if you have a dual head you have to maintain it a lot you have to look after it a lot and in the in this era of digital the actual you know maintenance has actually gone down we're actually maintaining them less because they're more reliable and other aspects so really my in my books if you can go a single head projector that's what you would probably do yeah. there, there are some advantages of um, a dual head what would be the advantage of a dual head projector so that they'd know what the difference is uh, the advantage of dual head laser projector yeah um, you could have an advantage if it's a dual head laser uh, 6P laser projector. Yeah, 6P. We have color separation uh, per projector per eye. Uh, in this case, you have higher efficiency uh, uh, throughput for 3D uh, yeah. systems. Uh, but this is the uh, probably the only advantage I could think of. Uh, yeah. for or you, is Barco considering going down that path at any stage as well? Uh, we could. We could. Uh, I think it's. Uh, uh, I don't see why not. But uh, yeah. from our perspective. A single projection is always the way to go. Okay, I, I agree with that. But now another thing you said during your presentation um, is the contrast ratio on this projector is 2,500 to one, yeah. and you did actually refer to it as not high and a HDR capable projector. Yeah. Now, my first thing is that is there's no real definition of what is HDR and what isn't HDR yet, but that's an interesting conclusion for you to make. So, um, can you? expand on that what what would make it a HDR projector in, in Barco's eyes yeah. and if this isn't a HDR projector will you be creating or releasing one in the future uh, so speaking about the contrast of about 2500 to 1 that's 20-30% uh, higher than what typical di the digital cinema projector would do now yeah. uh, especially the 4k projectors uh, making this a uh, HDR projector uh, would require uh, at least doubling that uh, contrast ratio or probably uh, preferably uh, much higher than this. We've heard numbers uh, ranging from 5 to 8 to 10,000 to 1 contrast. Uh, now this is a very difficult thing to make of course uh, because increasing the contrast uh, comes with a lot of trade-offs uh, trade in the projection. You can increase the contrast but you lose a lot of light, twice of the light so you need to boost it with a, a, adding additional laser, it will increase the, the system footprint, the system cost and so on. Uh, Barco is um, uh, looking into the uh, HDR evolution and um, we are uh, uh, considering uh, different technologies that would uh, not um, uh, increase the footprint and, and the cost of HDR uh, solutions but we actually uh, try to bring HDR to mainstream cinema without the big uh, um, 
cost impact that uh, HDR would, would, would bring. Well, that, that, that's good, and, and it's good to know um, that's in existence. Um, now, I wanted to actually talk about very quickly um, more some of the technical sides of the projector. So you can see up behind us up there, that's the projector. And uh, the lasers for the projector are actually in that case up there. But, um, but there's a lot of boxes down here as well. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's talk about that. Why do we have these big boxes down here? Yeah. Yeah, so as you said, James, uh, the lasers are included in the projector. They're actually um, uh, put into clusters, into like uh, enclosures, so make sure they're safe, but also to make sure the light is properly mixed and uh, brought to the projector engine. Uh, the reason that we have two boxes, just for clarity, we're using two, not three. The third one is just <laughs> as a spare. Uh, these are uh, coolers or chillers. They are uh, uh, meant to produce uh, low temperature cooling liquid to go into the projector and make sure the lasers and the uh, engine are operated at low temperature. To make sure that the heat generated by the lasers is extracted in a way. This is crucial uh, if you want to um, prolong the lifetime of your lasers. Uh, typically a 10 degree difference in temperature will cut your lifetime by a factor of two. And when you invest in such a high power projector, you want, to last, you want it to last as long as uh, it possibly can. So, Call it a necessary evil. Call it whatever you want. It's a it's it's a concept. It's a Barco product concept uh, to actually guarantee the performance uh, of the system. Now, it seems um, we have two of those boxes for a 45 and 60 L, uh, about 40 and 50 uh, 5,000 lumen uh, uh, projection systems. They can be slid under the projector, under the pedestal, for the minimal footprint in the booth, or you can. Uh, have those two stacked or separate uh, up to 10 meters away from the uh, from the projector. Going down in brightness to a uh, 30,000 lumen range, you actually only need uh, one of those. For the same image performance, you know, same quality, same lifetime, but just um, uh, lower brightness. So let, that's right, let's go over a few more details, something that cinema owner might understand a bit more. When you're making this much light, those DMDs go through hell. And that's one of the reasons you need this active cooling system. Like, a, is it 10 degrees down the cooling pipes or something? Is that correct? Something like this, yeah. It's, uh, it, it, it depends on the, yes. on the laser and so on. And yeah. DMDs, the main issue with DMDs in their life expectancy is also heat as well. There's a well-known thing called DMD um, cancer. It's as if, that, if it gets too hot and the mirror's moving a lot, it generates more and more heat. And that could eventually seize that mirror. Yeah. And then once that mirror seizes, it generates more heat. And then the, the, sensor, the little pixels around it will then seize as well and the, the, the error will spread like a cancer and that's the end of that mm. DMD. Mm. And so keeping them this cool, especially when we're talking about such an investment, you can see why there's a lot of effort being yeah. put into keeping them cool. And same with the lasers, as you said, we're going to run them, what, 30,000 hours, is it? Uh, yeah, they're actually uh, designed to run uh, more than 30,000 hours. Uh, but uh, the figure of merit that we know is that at 30,000 hours they will decrease in brightness by only about 20%. And then the longer you run it, uh, you, you'll start seeing uh, you know, further decrease in brightness. But this is uh, orders of magnitude better than what you get with lamps now. Yes. With lamps you get uh, you know, a typical projection brightness with uh, 6.5 kilowatt lamps, for example, will last 500 hours and will decrease in brightness by a factor of two. So over that period of time of 30,000 hours, you're actually replacing 60 lamps or more uh, with a dual projection system that will be 120 lamps on that system. So again, uh, uh, keeping the, uh, the brightness stable by a good cooling system for as long period of time is crucial uh, for the benefit of always the same image quality, but also for the benefit of saving lamps uh, for the exhibitor. I think the biggest benefit is the, is the confidence that it's going to last the distance because this is going to last a long time in the field True, yeah. and if I was purchasing, purchasing it I would want a great deal of confidence sure. it was going to last that long and, and the fact that you put so much effort in yeah. in that part of the design yeah. gives me a lot of confidence. As yeah. a technical person who knows a lot about this stuff I can see a lot of effort here and yeah. I appreciate that in your design. You, you know that uh, Barco is a holder of the Guinness World uh, Give record book, book yeah. of, uh, of records, world records uh, for the brightest cinema projector uh, on the planet that's a couple of years old now uh, 
the DMD cancer that you mentioned, we know all the stuff with xenon projectors. We know how important cooling of the engine is. And it's, um, we find it very difficult to believe uh, that you can just put 50,000 lumens uh, to a projector without additional cooling of the, uh, of the DMDs. So we, we indeed go a great length to guarantee that they're in the green zone, there, nothing's going to happen to them, reliability is optimal and the lifetime is really uh, uh, well, 8 to uh, 10 years of uh, lifetime, just with, uh, like with lamps. Okay, now we'll, we'll, we'll finish up here, but I wanted to go over a yeah. few little other, other things that are to come. Now, there is a compromise type of laser solution, com solution coming along, mm -hmm. and at CinemaCon, you will be showing your um, first, well, your prototype of it, which is a blue phos or a blue laser or blue pump phosphor yeah. based projector. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Which is the most interesting part of it is it's a retrofit. It, it fits mm -hmm. in to a 20B, so you're mm -hmm. not replacing it. You don't have to replace it. You can buy one from scratch. But we'll have a look at that more at yeah. the show. Are you, are you at the sure. show? Uh, I will not be at the show, but uh, what we are showing there is, uh, is, is a really exciting piece of technology because so far uh, the blue pump phosphor uh, projectors, especially for digital cinema, have been uh, limited in brightness. Uh, they've been probably about five to six thousand lumen. That's uh, right. Yeah, uh, the existing projectors. What Barker is doing now is actually uh, re-raising the bar there and uh, having a technology that's able, able of producing up to 20,000 lumen uh, on a 0.98 inch chip, so the equivalent of, of a Barco 20C. Uh, so this is in such um, a breakthrough achievement, but what's even more important is that um, uh, the capability of retrofitting yes, that in the that's field. Exactly, yeah. That's why, that's what's yeah. very important about, yeah. um, you know, the, the, the NEC has a blue pump phosphor laser yeah. projector and it's quite an interesting product. Yeah. Um, but the fact that you've reduced, introduced uh, something you can retrofit is important because one of the yeah. issues with the blue pump phosphor is that they are a big compromise in terms of they are, they're, they're passive cooled and therefore the cooling of the lasers etc is not near you know not not as efficient as this so you're going to get a big hit in the lifespan so the lifespan is a lot less than this for example what what sort of lifespan will uh, you get out of that the lifespan that uh, we are targeting is uh, about the same lifetime as this uh, about 30000 hours but uh, a faster decrease in brightness just because of the fact they're not actively cooled uh, somewhere we have to start making trade-offs. You know? Yes, that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So the trade-off that uh, we are making is uh, uh, probably not uh, cooling it actively with uh, refrigerant, but cooling it passively, but then really, really well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to be somewhere between 20 and 30,000 hours in lifetime, but down to 50% in brightness. Now, as the times uh, progress, we're only showing a technology prototype here. Uh, or, or in CinemaCon, yeah. uh, we'll still probably a year away from releasing a commercial product. You know, we'll still know more and learn more and uh, hopefully improve that, uh, th th that figure. But, but, but just on that topic, now, yeah. this is, so I always, the nice thing about Barco, they seem to come up with very well-rounded well -rounded ideas on the products. For example, the reason I find the retrofit idea interesting is mm -hmm. because at the hours that we're talking about, it's very, very likely that the projector will need to have its laser light source replaced before the before the rest of it hits end of life. So you need that capability. So that's uh, very interesting considering what other laser products and that are coming online. That's the first time I've seen that well well addressed in that market. Mm -hmm. So it's good to see, and I mean. Good, good prototype information. I'm keen to see the yeah. final release, yeah. and I must admit, I'm keen to see all your, you know, other doubles into the high, high dynamic range and how you implement that, yeah. uh, and, and that going into the future. So, anything finally you want to say before we uh, move on? Well, I um, first I like to say that uh, we're uh, grateful to have the opportunity to be here at NAB and to really col collaborate with uh, uh, what we've done uh, so far. You know, show uh, content. Uh, white color gamut content, 120 frames per second, uh, 3D at 40 foot Lambert, I mean all the whole new uh, technology with our laser projector. Uh, we are uh, uh, really excited to be able to showcase the new piece of technology, which is not a product yet, at CinemaCon uh, uh, next week. And um, you now, speaking on the retrofit, Barco has always been uh, 
uh, made a promise to our customers, our install base, that we will retrofit their existing systems uh, with a laser phosphor. I think we're coming much close, closer to that promise. And uh, going, going forward, uh, we're all about laser projection now. So uh, in a couple of, of years uh, from now, we expect that all of our land-based systems, not in the field, but systems that Barclay will offer, will completely tune to laser projection. So it's uh, we um, uh, please bear with us, but we have some really exciting um, uh, things coming ahead, um, yeah, things coming up in, in the years ahead. Well, thank you very much, Goran. Thank you, James. Uh, that's James Garden, the Senior Tech Geek at NAB 2015, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye for now. Thank you, guys.